Hello guys and guys, and welcome back to another tutorial here on Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back. Today we are going to be looking at how to make an animated Minecraft bucket fill up um, for uh, intro animations just like I did for Strawberry Jam's old intro. Um, so if I can go ahead and open up that, I can show you a really good example of uh, what it can come out looking like. So here you go. So that's kind of how I had the bucket fill up. I basically had a stream of, in his case, jam coming down uh, from the top of the screen into the bucket and having it fill up. Um, and at the end, I did a little bit of a fancy animation with it splatting at the screen. Um, but I'm not going to go into that into this tutorial. So pretty much uh, what you're going to want to do is grab uh, one thing offline, and that will be the Minecraft bucket image. Um, if you want to use something from a texture pack, you can by all means go ahead and do that. But the uh, process will differ. Um, but just make sure you have the original Minecraft texture. You can just search Google for uh, Minecraft bucket and then go to um, go to the images tab on Google and you can go ahead and drag this image out onto your desktop or wherever you want. And then from there, you'll be able to put it in here. Just make sure um, when you view it on Google, it has a checkered background because that means that it's transparent. If you have a black box around the edges, you might want to find another image that has a tra nice transparent background. Um, so once you've uh, made sure that it has a transparent background by hitting show transparency right here, you can actually, I'm going to leave the transparency on because I like it. Um, you can actually scale it up to fill um, a little bit more of the screen. Um, scale it up. I'm going to move it down here because we want the water or whatever else to be coming from above. And you'll notice it's a little bit pixelated around the edges here. It's a little bit pixelated. You can go over here down your timeline and hit the mode to become draft mode and that will retain the original pixels. Um, this is really useful for working with Minecraft textures because it keeps everything nice and jagged and uh, hard edged. Um, so once you've gone ahead and done that, we can start working on the stream of lava or water or whatever you wanna be putting into your bucket. So to start that off, I'm basically gonna do water. So I'm gonna hit Control Y to bring up solid settings or you can go to new solid. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is call this your, in this case, it'll be water for me because I'm picking blue, pick a nice blue shade. Um, that might even be a little bit better right there. All right. So once you've picked a nice blue shade, um, you can go ahead and make it comp size, whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter height and width. That's all up to you. And then click. Okay. So from here, you'll have your blue solid right now. That does not look like anything you want to be putting in your bucket. Obviously it's a, it's a little bit too big to be putting in your bucket. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to use a nice um, effect called uh, Jaws. It's actually a transition, a stock transition with um, After Effects, and it's uh, very useful. Um, so when you apply it, nothing will happen. When you apply it to your water layer, nothing will happen. But if you bring up the completion here, you'll notice it brings up, um, like the name suggests, Jaws. So um, it doesn't really look like water now, but we can actually go ahead and turn it into waves. It's looking a little bit better turn the height down to like maybe 3% and we'll turn the width up to 25. This is important. If you're on 1920 by 1080, you're going to want to bring your width up to 25. Um, that is very, very important. Um, the main reason being why is because the, uh, if you guys, um, if, the, if you guys can look at the cycle here, it starts low, high, low, high, low. So the start over here is where it finishes over here. That's really important that it starts and ends at the same place. Both They both start and end at the low. So if you're working with a different resolution for your bucket animation, just make sure that it starts and ends in the same position. All right, with that out of the way, our wave is done, but you're like, well, it's, it's the wrong way around. We want the inside to be blue and the outside to be clear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in alpha invert or I think it's actually invert alpha, invert alpha. Yep, and there's an invert alpha effect right here. You can basically put this on your water layer and it will go ahead and do just that for us. It actually switches the um, outside blue area um, with um, the clear area outside. So it goes ahead and switch that and that's exactly what we want. Uh, now to clean everything up, we can actually go ahead and close that and we can close all these just to clean everything up here. And um, with that done, we can move on to the next part of the tutorial, which is extending this so we can actually make it look like it's going down in the bucket. Right now, if we rotate it, 
and put it above, you can see we can make it going to the bucket, but then it ends really abruptly, and that's that's definitely not enough to fill up the bucket, at least in my opinion. Um, you can stop there if you want, but if you want to go further and add more um, more to your wave here, you can actually add a tile or a motion tile. Motion tile. It's right there. It's under stylize. Go ahead and apply this to your layer. And basically, we're going to want to mirror edges, and we're going to put the width up to about 1,000. So that's going to extend this from 100 pixels wide to 1,000 pixels wide. So we can just, oop, let me um, zoom out here. We can just, yeah, it's a, it's like a never-ending stream of water. It's actually quite amazing. And this is why um, starting and ending in the same place is very crucial. Because if we go back to Jaws here, and we bump this up to like 30, um, 30 you'll notice that it actually, or actually, let me just bump it up even more. Yeah. Tweak with it. Oh, the max you can do is, okay. So, say it starts and ends in like a different position. Actually, I think whatever you do, it starts in, oh yeah, no. If it's not starting and ending in the uh, in the right place, you'll notice it has this kind of like little blip in the middle where it's, yeah, it's no bueno. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to 25 here and uh, you'll notice when we do it now, it looks pretty seamless. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to rotate this layer by hitting um, by hitting the rotate tool, and we're going to rotate it. And now what we can do is just um, go ahead and animate it going into the bucket. It's really that simple. So actually, we might want to turn the output height on our motion tile to be a little bit less, so we can actually find the bottom here. Um, right now, it's kind of almost as if it's never ending. We're never gonna be able to find the bottom. All right, so there's the bottom and it's gonna go all the way in. So that looks like just enough liquid to fill up our bucket. Um, let's go ahead and zoom out and make sure the water is just off the screen. And we're going to go to the position um, keyframe on the water by hitting P while with the water layer selected. We're gonna keyframe the position at the beginning of our animation and we're gonna go to about, um, it'll take about five seconds for the water to get in the bucket and then we'll animate it, all of it going down and through the bucket and out of the screen, that's very important. Down through the bucket and out of the bottom of the screen. So now we basically have this water going into the bucket like that. All right, so that's cool and dandy, but what if we want, see, look at the end here, it just kind of, it looks like a block of just gelatin water going into the bucket, that's no good. So. We're going to go ahead and animate a keyframe on the jaws. We're going to animate the height of it to actually, oh, we're, we're actually going to animate the completion. Sorry, never mind. Um, so I'm going to go about one second in, and it's going to start to minimize its stream right about here. So we're going to go to completion. We're going to keyframe that at uh, one minute or one second. We're going to keyframe that one second. And then we're going to go to the end and then we're going to bring it down to completion 0%. So you'll notice. Um, if we play it back, I'm just going to ram preview here. It'll actually, uh, it'll start to get thinner. A uh, motion tile does take a lot of resources to render. So I'm actually going to bring my uh, render quality down to half. So when it starts to render, um, you'll see that as time progresses and we animate our completion on our jaws to go down to 0%, the stream actually gets thinner and thinner, even more realistic um, than what I did in Strawberry Jam's intro. Because on Strawberry Jam's intro, I just had it kind of finish like a block, but this one kind of looks like it's just streaming down. So it actually looks like there's a lot going on there. Like it's it's going, <laughs> it's wiggling, it's wiggling a lot when it gets down to the bottom here. So um, and actually the completion should go a little bit earlier. So I'm gonna hit U on my keyboard on the water layer to bring up the keyframes, all the keyframes, and we're gonna go for our completion. I'm just gonna bring that in just to make it go out sooner. So it's gonna go out sooner. Bring it in, it's gonna go out sooner. All right, let's ram preview this here real quick. So bringing the completion in makes it thin out sooner and ultimately end sooner. So it'll go like that. Stream, 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 stream. All right, I think that looks good. Um, it's a little bit wavy at the end, but you can actually fix that by messing with the height um, parameter as it continues. So I can just keyframe that, they go down to doubt like one percent so now it'll just it'll start out really wavy while it's wide and then as it goes down thin it'll just kind of slow down the height all right so now let's run preview that and then it just kind of goes 
So, looks really cool, but now it's time to make it look like it's actually going into the bucket, so let me close all the keyframes on the water layer. Go ahead and save. Very important save. Never forget to save. Always make it a habit to save. <laughs> and um, the front here, actually, it looks blocky as well. So we can actually do the same in reverse. Sorry, I lied. We're not going to the bucket yet. <laughs> um, we can actually do the same in reverse. I'll uh, animate the completion right here as soon as it hits the bucket at 20. So completion, I'm going to keyframe that where it is. Add a keyframe there and then go to 0%. So it's going to go like... That. Or actually, here, let me move that in just see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like. Huh, okay. I've never really tried it in the beginning part before, so when it starts out, it's gonna go right here. I'm gonna actually easy ease this. Easy ease this keyframe. If you haven't watched my keyframe tutorial, make sure you do it before this one. Because uh it will it will help you. So it kind of goes like that. I don't know. I think that looks okay. Yeah. Um, you can tweak it as much as you want later, but that's kind of just quick and dirty. Having it whoop, right there and then thin out. Alright, so with that done, we can go ahead and make it look like it's going inside the bucket. So right now, what we got to do is we got to separate the back part of the bucket right here and the front part of the bucket right here. So to do that, we're going to get our handy dandy pen tool up here. You can hit G on your keyboard to select it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this bucket layer, I'm hitting enter on my keyboard. I'm going to rename it to bucket, bucket underscore front. All right. So with that done, we can actually use our pen tool and uh, separate it. It doesn't have to be exact because we're on draft and um, it'll go to the nearest pixel. So with that said, as long as it's close enough to the edge of the um, pixel, we should be good. So. I'm going to go around the front here, or the back here, and do that. And you notice it selects the back, but this is called bucket front. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard to show the uh, mask property, and I'm going to invert it. All right, there we go. So I'm going to uh, actually unvert it, uninvert it while I'm working with it. So you see it's not perfect. Um, I'm going to select my selection tool. I'm going to click on the bucket front. It's very important that you click out and then click on the bucket front, and then start moving around your key, or start moving around your path. So it gets rid of all those dark edges. So you're just left with the back part. And then we'll invert it to re reveal the front afterwards. So that looks like that. All right, good, good, good. Um, it makes it really simple because it's in draft quality and it retains each pixel. If this were like a high resolution image, we would have such a hard time with uh, the pen tool, but that seems to do the trick right there. Very quick and dirty. All right, so we'll invert it now. And uh, there we go, we have the front of our bucket. Now instead of doing the same thing all over again, we can actually just duplicate this layer by hitting Control D, going to the mask property, and uninverting it. So now we have a back, oh, we had to rename this to bucket underscore back. All right, so now we have our back and we have our front. So now that they're separate, we can actually go ahead and do something really cool. So we can put the water between, or we gotta put the back underneath the front, so our front, our bucket front is on top of our bucket back and we put the water in between the two and what do you know, it goes in. So that's all cool, but look, it's leaking out the bottom. So what we actually have to do is add um, either a track mat or mask out um, that. So I'm gonna add a track mat just because um, of one reason and that's that our water layer is actually moving. So if I add a mask to our water layer, if I go ahead and add a mask to our water layer, add a mask to it, the mask moves with the layer. I don't know if you can see that's really light color, but the mask move, moves with the position. So we're actually going to have to do a, uh, we're going to have to do a track mat so it won't move with the layer as it's keyframed. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add another solid, doesn't matter what color. And we're going to move it down to where we don't want the water to show. And we're going to unsee it. We're gonna put it above the water layer and we're gonna go to the water layer and set the track mat, oh, that's blending mode, track mat to alpha inverted. So now it doesn't show wherever the, um, it doesn't show wherever this blue blocking out layer is intersecting with it. So wherever the blue layer is, the water does not show. So if we move the blue, um, if we move the blue layer up here, it wouldn't show the water up there. So it's just wherever we move this layer that it doesn't show. It's kind of like masking it out. 
just hence the name. Um, track Matt, actually, no, masking, but track Matt. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying. Um, so there you go. And um, there we go, it's going into the bucket. But we gotta make the bucket fill up, and that's the last part to this wonderful piece of effect. And um, with that, we will just basically do one thing. So what we're going to do is we're gonna duplicate our um, bucket back layer. I'm gonna duplicate that. We'll call this bucket back underscore track on mat. Bucket back underscore track mat. All right, and what we're going to want to do is add another blue layer. And we'll name this blue layer. We'll put it underneath the track mat. We'll name it um, filling up water. So with this, we're basically going to add another jaws effect. And we're going to apply it to the filling up water. And we're going to go to our completion um, up there. We're going to bring it super up. And then we're going to go to our width. Do it 25. Why not? Height. We're going to mess with it like that. We're going to go to waves. And that looks very nice. Now, we're going to want to bring the completion up. And then we're going to want to put in another motion tile. You'll, you'll get what I'm getting at here. There. All right. So we're going to add another motion tile just to mirror the edges and we'll put that on. Uh, motion tile is very useful, if you guys can tell. Um, we're gonna change the output height this time. We're gonna jack it up. So now we have, ooh, I forget that it mirrors the edges <laughs> instead of filling them. All right, um, let me just fix it really root, very rough fix by bringing that down. All right, so now what we got here is we can actually animate this to fill up right here. So um, if we put that above, yeah. All right. So if we keep our filling up water underneath our bucket track mat and we hide the bucket track mat, then um, we can use our filling up water and put it on alpha or track mode alpha. And we can move the filling up. Oh, we can move the filling up layer and it will fill up the bucket just like that. And now we can animate. We can animate it filling up by going to the position of the filling up water position going from where oh actually we gotta we gotta keep from the position when it starts to go in all right so it'll go in it fills up the bottom part of the bucket and then it'll start to show right about now put the keyframe right there and then as it fills up down to the very last little bit of water it'll actually keyframe the water to go up yeah right about there um you'll notice it kind of peaks up on this side so we're going to animate the um the height of the jaws to go down so we'll go have it go down and then even yeah, right there all right so now that we have done that we can ram preview and hopefully this looks pretty accurate right about there all right so that's oh well, might want to zoom out all right so that is that. That is pretty much the effect in a nutshell. I'll just ran preview real quick here. All right. So the water comes down from the top and uh, it fills it up. It thins out and we get our nice bucket. Now we might want to add a little bit of wave at, at the end here. It looks just a little bit too flat in my opinion. So we're we'll at a little bit of height. Make sure you're at the same place you made your original height keyframe. Otherwise, it's going to make a new one and problems will arise. I'm going to hold down control to make a new, uh, more fine tune adjustment here and I'm actually going to bring up the width keyframe. I'm going to keyframe the width a little bit before and then bring it up the width to go down to right about here. Just so the bumps in the middle, you know, or maybe the bump isn't in the middle. Nah, I like the bump in the middle or maybe something like that. Yeah, something like that. So go here to that. And go down like that. And we might even want to animate the uh, the width to go like a little bit after. Just to make it look like it's still moving, you know? So there we go. Oh, actually, I'm going to take that back. I'm gonna show you. All right, so um, it kind of abruptly stops right about there. It just kind of halts. So to fix that, we can actually um, we can move the center. I think. Yeah, 
We can move the center. All right, that's what I was thinking of. All right, so I'm gonna animate the center when it finishes to just keep going, you know? I'm just gonna, oop, I moved it up. All right, there we go, animate that. Just keep going. All right, so we gotta match the velocity, so it's a little bit of trial and error. Um, if we move it too far off, it'll move too fast once it finishes, but let's just check. All right. It kind of slows down right as big, so we gotta move it more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, let's see how that looks. Because it kind of just abruptly gets real slow after it finishes. Alright, finish we're improving here, and we'll see if it matches if it matches correctly. There we go. Yeah, maybe even a little bit more, and it looks like it matches correctly. And we can now we can animate the height to go down. So I'll animate the height here. All right, so we already have a keyframe at the height right about here, and then we'll just animate it until it finishes to go down. It's a little bit more of subtle that way. All right, so let's check it out. See what we have created here. All right, and the waves slowly go down, and um, we'll see how that turns out. So the water comes down, thins out, and we got that going right here, and then it, it slowly water waves finally die down all right i think it just needs a little bit more to the yeah a little more velocity for that and then uh, yeah we're good so it comes in thins out goes down like that and we're we're pretty much done so i'm gonna ramp preview it one last time for you guys just to show final result and uh we can go ahead and you can render this out and use it in an intro um alternatively you can just pre-comp it and put that in your intro but you can do whatever you want so there you go that's just the basic of the effect. And then it waves out, and then the waves slowly die out. Because we brought down the height of the waves just so it got flat at the very end. All right, so that's pretty much that. Hopefully you guys learned something from this tutorial. Hopefully it was clear enough. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below, and I'd love to answer them. Um, you can actually go ahead and add like maybe like a texture to the water. It's kind of what I did with um, Strawberry Jam. I just added a, I think it was a turbulent, turbulent, uh, turbulent displacement? No, it was, uh, forgetting the name. Oh boy, this is embarrassing. Yeah, I forgot the name. I think it was, oh, it was Fractal Noise. Ooh, put one in the clutch there. All right, so I just basically put on a Fractal Noise on both the water and the fill-up layer, but I'll just add it to one and copy it over. And uh, once we have the Fractal Noise, it'll it'll look very bad, but if we actually just, uh, you know, bring out, bring down the whatever, we'll just... Um, noise type, we can actually change that, but opacity and blending mode. You want to put the blending mode to add, I think it was? No, it was to overlay. Yeah, overlay. Um, and you can basically play around with the contrast and the brightness to get the right kind of shading for you. And that gives it a nice little texture. And then you can animate the, um, the evolution to kind of move around the waves as you go. Looks kind of, looks very kind of cool. So I'll go ahead and do that. Put one at the beginning one at the end just you know key from the evolution whatever you want so let's kind of put that through there and then once you've finished customizing on one just copy it and then paste it on the other one which is the fill up water layer now notice how they don't match so what we actually have to do is put the water and the um, track mat or wait the water and the water track mat mm. I think all right we got to put which one? I don't know. <laughs> Basically, I'm just saying put the, the stream of water going into the bucket underneath the fill-up layer. But I don't know which one that is, just from glancing at it. But we can go ahead and ramp preview that and see how that looks. So that's just adding a little bit of texture. It's optional, of course. I mean, based on preference, do you whether you like it or not. So we'll go down here, go like that, whoop. You know, kind of up to you. Um, But yeah. I'm actually going to have to remove it because I personally don't really like the look, but you can go ahead and keep it if you want. So I'll get rid of the fragments and um, there you go, that's the draw. Hopefully this helped you guys. A lot of people were interested in that effect and such. Uh, hopefully I didn't um, join on this tutorial too long. I kind of went into a little bit more detail than I usually do, but um, hopefully that's okay. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you um, share it on Facebook or Twitter and like it. Um, share the love, you know, if you found this useful. Chances are your friend will, and your dog, and your grandma, and um, you know, hopefully they can learn something from it as well. So with that said, 
uh, make sure you leave a comment on which intro I should break down an element of uh, next episode of this. Um, if you want just a more general tutorial, make sure to suggest what tutorial I should do next, what tutorial you are interested in, what you want to know how to do. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Suggestions down in the comments. Uh, but other than that, leave a like and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.